So, uh, Congress isn't only about techy meetups. It's about personality. It's about humans. And um, what happens when blockchain and social connection meet each other and have a baby? Well, Scuttlebot, the decentralized social network, um, may result, and Zena or Self will introduce Scuttlebot to you. Thank you very much. So, hello. I'm uh, Zena, or more maybe known in Scuttlebutt as Zelf. That's my profile picture. I'm not just trying to put anything out there. <laughs> but yes, I'm Zelf or Zena, and I've got a background of seven years in digital fabrication, slash the fab lab scene, and I'm a grant writer for Scuttlebutt. That's why I'll be talking about Scuttlebutt today. Um, so, I'm going to take this off because it was making noise. Uh, so, what's Scuttlebutt? Can we get a really, really quick, how many people here have heard about Scuttlebutt before? Hey, that's a few. That's pretty good. Okay, second question. How many people got on Scuttlebutt? Okay, that's not all of you. Those of you who had heard about it but didn't get on? Mm -mm -mm. Um, <laughs> And yes, so the rest of you uh, will be telling you what Scuttlebutt's about. So, Scuttlebutt, it's a really strange name, right? That's like the first reaction everyone has. Uh, so Scuttlebutt, originally, it's a sailing term for, or for water container. It's a slang for gossip, which is also why Scuttlebutt is created, whoops, uh, is called the Gossiping Protocol. So, Scuttlebutt was created for by Dominic uh, when he was living on a boat. And he was like, huh, I'm living here on a boat, but I want to talk to all my friends. What should I do? Well, I'll build my own protocol. Of course that's the first thought everyone has, right? <laughs> so he did, and Scuttlebutt was born. Um, so it's a peer-to-peer -peer gossiping protocol. Um, so some of you might be curious what specifically is that. It's not a centralized system. Most people here should recognize this casual one. Um, actually, oh wait, let me check here. Yeah, okay, good. Um, it's more like, whoops, double, this. So. It's a distributed network um, with distributed, not decentralized, if anyone cares about that difference. Um, or this, or which is, by the way, a picture of Andre Stolt's actual um, network. And this is a picture of Mix's network. Um, simply put, it's kind of like this. Uh, you've got your friends. You get your friends' friends. This you can see and you can store on your computer. Then you got your friends' friends' friends. This you can't see, but you can store. Except if you're using Patch Bay, then you can also see it. But yeah. <laughs> and beyond. <laughs> Which you don't even know exists. So that's how we communicate. Um, so to point this out, this also means that no one else knows you exist, which makes it very difficult. Approximately right now, we're around 10,000 users on Scuttlebutt. The thing is, afterwards, <laughs> uh, the thing is, um, we're not sure that's the exact number, because it's impossible to actually be able to tell how many people are out there. Do you really want to? Okay, okay. <laughs> um, so um, this means there can be communities using these in a mesh network village somewhere, for example. Or it could be, yeah, something else. Um, and that's like physically impossible. Like, it's not possible with the protocol. Um, so. 
that's like the basics of it. But there's also pubs. And pubs are basically, okay, what if I want to know more people than the people who are within my friends, friends, friends reach, you know? What if I want to know someone else uh, who deals with shrooms? Not shrooms, mushrooms. <laughs> such as a shout out to Glyph out there who does that. Um, then we got pubs. And pubs is a very, very green analogy is actual physical pub. So you go there, you meet some people that are outside of your friendship circle, you talk, you hear their gossip about their friends that you are not connected to, and you tell them your gossip about your friends, etc. And essentially, the scuttlebutt protocol is very much replicating how real human interaction actually happens, rather than a centralized system, which would be more like, huh, I take everyone's data and then I tell everyone what they need to know. Sort of. Very generalized. Okay, so there's a few quirks with the uh, scuttlebutt and similar kind of protocol sometimes. Um, so there's communal data privacy. It's impossible to see others' data unless they are in your network proximity. That's what we mentioned previously, right? Uh, you've got offline usability. So this is one that surprises most people, because most people think, internet, huh, I need a connection. Well, you don't! <laughs> so it's completely usable in mesh communities and over, for example, sneaker net. Um, and third quirk. You've got free listening. This is more of a design quirk, but it's still one that's very important, I think. Um, so rather than a top-down censoring, there's a choice of blocking. Uh, so you can choose to not listen rather than mm, removing, revoking someone's right to speak. Um, then we got the fourth quirk, which yeah, it's in the air a little bit, but it's hardware bound. So the SSB accounts are tied to the device they're on. No passwords and more difficult to swarm, which, mm, yeah, it mm, could be discussed, but still. Um, it's hardware bound, so no passwords, which currently means you, if you have an account, you can't like log in with the same account on mobile and then use it on your computer as well. You have to have like two different ones. Um, yes. What if you lose your device, though? If it's hardware bound, that sucks. <laughs> this has happened to me. <laughs> um, so that's where Dark Crystal comes in. And I hope Dan is OK with this, because we've done this before. But uh, he's going to explain a little bit about Dark Crystal. Um, <laughs> Interacting with the protocol is the sole custodian of a private key. Um, try and imagine something really precious, which if you lost it, you would lose access, capacity and affordances. Um, so I'm not talking about a passport or a bank card. Those things, you can go to a central authority and you can replace them. If you lose your password to Facebook, you could go through some process such as showing them an identity card or some other identifying feature which they would determine binds to you, the human who is the owner of that account. In peer-to-peer -peer systems, there, there is no company. There's no um, central authority to whom you can go and jump through whatever process to regain access. So. Uh, if you lose your private key, you are uh, screwed in P2P world. Um, this is your digital identity, and if you lose it, you're screwed. That's very fragile. Uh, password managers are hard. Um, about 17% of all Bitcoins which have, will ever be minted have statistically looked like they've been lost. If you literally can't pay people to keep this stuff secure, I think it indicates that it's a ripe problem to solve. And that's really what we've been working on with Dark Crystal. If you're a Harry Potter geek, think Horcrux. If you're not a Harry Potter geek, 
It's um, a mechanism which leverages human relationships and trust. And you weave a spell saying, um, of my five friends, let's say my mum, my dad, two brothers, and my best friend, as long as three of these people out of the five confirm and grant me access, then you can regain the original um, secret. In this case, it might be a private key. Um, without themselves holding the shards, the piece, revealing anything to them. So it's pretty exciting. Hope that helps. Thank you, Dan, who's right here, actually. <laughs> no? Oh, that's my part. Oh, sorry about that. That's it. You're what? Okay. <laughs> Another Kiwi, that was. I have yet to actually meet Dan in person, and there's a lot of people out here that is like the first time we meet, because we work online only. So it's, it's pretty exciting to be here, we like running around scouting who could be that person on Scuttlebutt. Um, yes. Um, so yes, this is Dan. Uh, he's the founder of Blockades, an acclaimed crypto girl. Um, so, how do I use Scuttlebutt? The actual usage of Scuttlebutt could look like this. This is Patchwork. Uh, patchwork is the recommended one to use in once you start using uh, Scuttlebutt. Um, but there's many other, because remember, Scuttlebutt is only the protocol, and then you can place many different interfaces and applications over it. Uh, so you got Manyverse, which is the mobile client, which Andre Stoltz released like two months ago. Woo! <laughs> and we got Patch Bay, uh, which Dark Crystal currently is being run via. Um, it's more experimental, easier to change than patch, patchwork. Um, uh, Tic Tac, which is like a blog stylish. Um, and then you get more specialized applications, because obviously you don't only have to use like a social media interface. You could also, for example, play chess. That's you, hey! <laughs> Hello, by the way. <laughs> mm, uh, or you could make book reviews applications, or skill sharing applications. And it goes on and on and on. Pretty much anything that has to do with connections between people. Um, so this is when we get to the second part. How does Scuttlebutt fit into the future? Oh, what a yummy question. Before, oh, did I not add that? Oh, I had this GIF. Is that coming soon? Wait. Yes, OK, let's just jump to the GIF, because it's fun. Uh, let's do the wave before, because we're going to get like shifted a little bit. Now you've heard about Scuttlebutt. You know what it is. Now we're going to kind of talk about like more futurist. So could we try out quick wave starting from over there, spreading downwards, going up here, spreading backwards? Is that possible? Are you guys capable with, of this? Yes? Yes? Are you down? Person over there, stand up if you're ready. Woo! Okay, let's go! Okay, we got it, it's ready, it stopped. Okay, it's somewhere going, yeah! Woo! <laughs> Good job, people. <laughs> okay, so instead we'll go back a bit. Because we're switching. We're talking about the future. And we're talking about solar punk. So solar punk is a common uh, futuristic approach. It started as a sci-fi genre, uh, which many people in this kind of community also very much enjoys. Um, it's a way of looking at how we can shape the future. Um, it's also an aesthetic, um, or gifts sometimes. Um, so, uh, there are very, very many different uh, 
views of how the future could be. So we're, I'm talking right now, so obviously I'll be presenting my view and what maybe some of my friends and I talk a lot about. Um, but there are as many different future views as there are people. So none of this is fact, swish, but mm, yeah, take it with a grain of salt. Um, so obviously I put this in the wrong wave thing. We're be, we'll be coming from the perspective of digitally fabricatable society. So solarpunk also kind of merges very much technology with ecology and how to live sustainable in a world without ravishing it, but still utilizing the developments we do have and the knowledge we do have um, in a good way. <laughs> so there are a few ingredients in that I kind of like cherry picked for this. Um, so it's Fab City, machines building machines, open source ecology, and electronics home production, uh, or home electronics production, whatever you want to put it. So we start with Fab City. Fab City is an initiative. Uh, it's an offspring from the Fab Lab movement. Uh, it's globally connected cities for local manufacturing. Um, this is kind of a map-ish with a few of the countries, but as you can see, I'm not going to read all of these cities out, but you can see that there's many, and they're all kind of connected in this big network of cities who have um, proclaimed themselves for local manufacturing. Um, so you got Paris in there, you got Barcelona in there, you got so Seoul, uh, you got Oakland and Detroit, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's one ingredient. These are just flavors. Uh, then we got machines building machines. Machines building machines is kind of the component that can accelerate this movement. Because sure, you want local manufacturing, but are you going to buy all the machines yourself? Like, is everyone going to spend a bunch of money to buy them? No, that's unsustainable. But if you get the machines to build the machines, who can then continue building machines, you get this rapid movement going on, right? So machines building machines is a movement that was also started at Felisvegstadet in Oslo, together with MIT. So Felisvegstadet is a fab lab, uh, sprung out of Bitraf, the hackerspace in Oslo, beautiful place. Um, and uh, they've built the first large-scale open-source CNC machine that's completely parametric. Um, and parametric means it's scalable, and you can build a small-scale CNC machine with the same design. Um, so a CNC, a good one, is all you need to build all the other machines. So we got the first key, which is pretty damn cool. Um, so what else kind of machines we want to build? Well, we want to be able to sustain ourselves, right? So we got open source ecology, right? Open source ecology is, amongst one, a project where they're building uh, 50, I think, agricultural machines um, in order to locally produce the food you want. And also because mm, the way the industry around farming works is a little bit corrupt. Um, and we also have projects such as Romi. Romi project is robotic microscale far farming. Um, they've just received a bunch of funding from European Union, yes, um, to develop uh, small scale farming in Barcelona. Uh, here's a brief map on different farms across Europe, which have started or are in the process of actually becoming digitally fabricatable farming spaces. Yes. Um, another one, which we mentioned previously this morning, was uh, Libre Silicon, which is really, really cool. It's the uh, first time we've kind of completed the kit now. We can build computers from scratch, and you can do it in your basement. Um, but this one specifically was for semiconductors, which was like the missing link. Um, and. This is another, it's an ISP, a programming board, 
um, which is um, standardized um, by MIT, which they use in Fab Academy, which is ho hosted all across the world. Um, and yeah, it's just yet another example of how easy it is to make circuit boards. Um, all right, so all that is cool, right? But <laughs> what does it really mean? It means shoes. No, I'm kidding. Um, but um, so to wrap this up, we're going to use an analogy. So the analogy starts with shoes. So let's say you want your shoes, because that's something we all use. It's something we all need, right? Let's say you want shoes, but you don't want to buy them. So you decide to learn how to make your shoes. Fabulous, right? But let's say the neighbors around you, they're like, huh, I want shoes too. And previously, what we had to do was obviously, well, if one city learns, has like a shoemaker, well, then another city has to have one person who spends all their time learning how to make shoes. That's a lot of time consumption. So you have this one city, they learn how to build shoes. You have another city, they learn how to build shoes. You have another city, they learn how to build shoes. That's a lot of learning of how to build shoes that's happening, right? So what if you just have one person learn how to build shoes, and then they share that information open source? Yay! Now so many people can build shoes. Wow! It's incredible. And then what if you have like villages spread out across the world building shoes and making open source designs for maybe even like toilets or like houses or like showers or kitchen equipment. And they're connected in a network, then they can share together and continuously develop the resources and the knowledge on how to actually live, which is a knowledge that's somehow managed to be forgotten in modern society. Um, so yes. Uh, a quick side note to this, I recently heard uh, from Europe's future research director. I don't know if there's the thing, but somehow that was kind of her title. Um, that uh, Adidas, I think, are currently uh, getting into the market of building micro uh, factories instead of stores. So you can go in there with your old shoe, they'll reuse the material, break it down, and then you can buy the new design. You don't actually have to buy the material for the design. So that's kind of their new thinking concept of how to develop these stores. So shout out to hackers out there. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, so for this, we need digital files, right? And how do we spread digital files? Well, our means, our roads are kind of being compromised in current society, which is sad. Um, so this is kind of how I ended up on Scuttlebutt. I was talking to Alex, who's sitting right there, Coblane on Scuttlebutt. Um, and he was like, I was like, oh, in order to build this new society, and like, if we're actually going to do it, have a change, make a change in the world, we really need to have like means of communications that can't be compromised. But, and he was like, huh, haven't you heard of <laughs> Scuttlebutt or that that project? Shout out or IPFS? Shout out as well. <laughs> um. um and I was like, no, I haven't. What is this? And then I got on. And yeah, the story continues. But either way, to get back to what we were talking about, digital files, and we need to be able to spread them. Um, and in order to move freely, we need new protocols, which is what dot .ipfs and scuttlebutt can do. Um, and... New protocols could mean freedom of information, and scuttlebutt could mean freedom of information. So that's why I'm on scuttlebutt. Um, yes, welcome to the scuttleverse. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. Do we have questions in the room? Um, please go to the microphone number one or number two because the people on the stream also have, want to hear you. So who's the first one? Two, one, two, one. I think number two was the first. So your question, please. So how does Scuttlebutt actually work? What's the transport layer? What's the what? what? Uh, what's the transport layer? Do you use Wi-Fi? Do you use Bluetooth? Do you use something custom? Uh, as mentioned previously, I think um, you can use SneakerNet. You can use, we're actually developing, or some people are, I don't know who exactly, but I've heard rumored, uh, using Bluetooth. Uh, you can use mesh networks. You can use regular Wi-Fi. Mm. Choose your means. You can use radio if you really want to. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what is implemented right now? Uh, currently, um, there's been people researching Bluetooth, as I mentioned. Um, I thought I heard a rumor. Was radio something that's been in the air? No? Yes? Yes, it has. <laughs> um, uh, then we've had, uh, I know, Mesh networks, actual like protocols built for mesh networks, have also been researched upon. Um, personally, that's the one I'm looking into the most. Um, and yeah, obviously, regular Wi Fi mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, microphone number one, please. You stated that information spread via Scuttlebot won't uh, travel more than three degrees of separation. But what about uh, pubs? If someone in your n network joins a pub, won't he flood all his network through the pub? Yes. And because pub usage is common, uh, you should get a fully connected graph. Uh, yes and no. Uh, so what's pretty common now in the early stages, that's kind of what's happening, we think. Obviously, we don't know, but that's what we think. Um, so, mm, since the community is small enough-ish um, that a lot of people have joined similar pubs, mm, there's a pretty cohesive uh, use case of the pubs. Um, but you're also very capable of just joining your friend's pub, for example, or setting up your own pub, or uh, not using pubs which is not super recommended, but it's possible. Um, um, yeah, uh, I think that answers the question. Ish, do you want to add on to it? No, OK. Thank you for that. Uh, microphone number two, please. Um, he hello, I have a question. So you know how people use social media? Do you want oh, to be Could a little bit closer to the sure. microphone. Do you hear me now? Yes. A okay, so better. you know how people use social media? They want to talk to their friends. No, 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 a little bit closer. They want, like, okay, talk to their friends. Um, so, like, like, for example, like, if a person, well, I'm just trying to figure my question. Okay, so if a person, like, wants to talk to their friend on Facebook, they know mm -hmm. that their friend has a Facebook account, so they can just use Facebook. So, like, I, and you said, like, Scuba has like a small community. So how do you entice people to join if there's not many people using it? So how does Scuba address this problem? Hopefully you understand my question. Yes. Um, oh, actually, I think Andre Stoltz would be better at answering this question because he's more into the whole uh, uh, bringing Scuttlebutt to the masses. Personally, I think we're still in a phase where there's enough things we need to set mm, more stable uh, before it reaches the massive public. Um, that's personally. Um, but uh, I think as any other network, I mean, it's the biggest question for any social media ever out there. How do we get users, you know? Um, it's, it's what they always ask. Um, and you could say, we could use the route of Echo Villages and Echo Villages using Scuttlebutt. Or we could use the route of uh, showcasing how much better it is with data privacy. Or we could use the route of waiting for society to become 
infringing enough on people's privacy that they have to use Scuttlebutt, uh, or et cetera, you know? Um, but, yeah. I'm, it's not a goal of mine, so I'm not the best person to answer that. Andre Stoltz would be much better to answer that. Thank you. Yeah. Do we have a question from the interwebs? No, so far? Is it yes? No? Okay. Uh, so, microphone number one, please. Hello, my name is Matthew. I'm already a member for Scuttlewares for two years. And uh, it's more like a question for audience. Since we don't meet uh, in real life, can we have some family photo? Ah! <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> Should we finish after the last question? People who are on Scuttlebutt, if you come up here, we can take a picture together. It'll be one of the biggest crabs meets. <laughs> okay, <thanks>. Nice. <laughs> Connecting in real life. I love that. Uh, microphone number two, please. So before even centralized social networks were, were in existence, people were kind of worried about what happens if someone creates lots of fake accounts mm. and there's a civil attack. Now, because Scuttlebutt is distributed, um, how does that work with Scuttlebots? Do, do users have to manually block those accounts, or is there some centralized system that blocks fake accounts? Uh, so there's no centralized system to start there. Um, if someone creates a fake account, I mean, define a fake account. If I use an account and don't use my real name, is that a fake account? Well, I if mean, just like if you, 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 you mentioned that you have um, accounts. three degrees of separation, I could mm -hmm. just add lots of um, bots to your, to your edge network through that mm -hmm. degree of separation to, and then flood your feed with nonsense. Um, okay, well, there's two responses there. Number one, there's the whole hardware thing, that usually when you create an account, it's kind of tied to the hardware. It's hard to run multiple instances of Scuttlebutt from the same computer. Um, but mm, that could also be roundabouted eventually if research comes on enough. The second answer would be the whole, uh, you can block people. Um, so yeah, it's okay. the whole free listening, non-censoring thing. Okay, yes. last thing. Um, you said that, I think you mentioned that the graph on one of the first slides, it was, it was distributed, but not decentralized. Oh, could, could you repeat, sorry? You, you, on the, one of the first slides, you said it was distributed, but not decentralized. Could you kind mm -hmm. of expand on that a little bit? Um, oh, uh, Honor had a great slide about this. Uh, I did a talk with him recently. Um, it's, uh, there's like, if you actually search difference between distributed and decentralized, there's this beautiful picture you can get where it shows like the mapping of a centralized system with like the whole node in the middle that's giant and those like small peaks. And then you have a mapping of a decentralized system where you have the big nodes uh, <laughs> and you have like everyone kind of crisscrossing, but also very much uh, on focusing on the nodes. And then you have the whole distributed system and the distributed system, um, it's more direct between peers to peers to peers to peers to peers to peers to peers. To peers. But some people may argue what about pubs? That makes it decentralized, right? Um, uh, obviously, yes and no, because you don't have to use pubs. So, yes. <laughs> so, in this case, I think we're done. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank People, you. a warm applause for Zena. <laughs>